Well, thank you for joining me. This is my HTML panel, which is available on GitHub and the link is in the comments below. I'm just going to talk you through the elements of the HTML panel so that you can see how hopefully I've achieved um, what I've achieved here and then you can reverse engineer it using the downloads from GitHub to construct a panel or series of panels that are to your personal specifications for your own home. Just to let you know that this panel is based on domotic switches and sensors but it also extensively controls other devices that use APIs such as NanoLeaf Canvas, Hue and Sonos. So it is modifiable to control devices which use APIs. So if we have a look at the first screen, you can see that down the extreme left hand side are the tabs where you can select home screen, lights, power, climate, security, audio, and there's also a quick timer switch there, which I'll go through in more detail shortly. And then on the right hand side is a status display, which appears on all screens, which at the top shows a clock. Then there are some temperature sensors, which are directly connected to Demotics and polled roughly every 30 seconds into this panel. And then we have some API information as well, which is brought from external website um, regarding weather. And this shows the current pressure and also the current um, forecast. And then underneath that, we have a graphic which is displayed in the event of high humidity occurring in certain areas. And that is useful to indicate to the user to take remedial action. And then underneath here, we have an interesting section, which is brought about by specifying certain IDX switches in Demotics at the very beginning of the HTML. This one, for example, this particular page, the home page, has four different IDXs in the array. And this is the feedback area. So as you can probably see in the main area, there are many finger size touch areas that can switch pan switch demotic switches on or off however there are certain occasions where the user does need to know whether demotics considers a switch to be on or off and that is this area here so when one touches this area the switch indicates whether or not it's on or off and therefore we can get away with polling a relatively few number of switches in Demotics while still actually providing a full user experience. So on the home screen as well in the main section, you can see that I have a few regularly used controls here on the front page. This is mainly to control lighting in the living room. So we have some uh, buttons here which control hue scenes. We also have an all off button and then we have some audio here for the most frequently used radio stations on Sonos in the living room. And then also we have some transport controls here which are bespoke and can be downloaded from the GitHub. Um, they're part of the HTML suite of things that you can use. We also have some kitchen devices and switches here, for example, some hue lights, and we also have some direct LED control via Demotics via Lightwave RF. And also we have some timers here. Again, I'll go into timers in more detail shortly. And then down here we have the control of some nano leaf scenes, which again, um, I have covered in a previous video on how you can use NanoLeaf API to control NanoLeaf through Demotics and this utilizes that so you'd be able to further reverse engineer that information as, um, as you go. So let's take a look at another screen. So here is the lighting screen. So as you can see, every room is, is down here and there are immediate commands for the individual rooms. So the most frequently used moods are put down there within um, what's called mini keys, which are these, en um, these envelopes of um, text, which um, draw this, this line around the text and um, 
then are pressable by via your fingers and can bring about changes to scenes. And there is also a drop down area on each of these rooms where the individual lights can be controlled. So using a special pop up when clicking on an indi individual light, the name of the hue light appears from the hue API as well as what its current situation is. And it brings through some pressable um, controls here so that you can actually activate and change the color of individual lamps. So for example, changing a lamp down here, such as my iris, you can change the hue and the brightness and saturation and the, the changes happen immediately in the hue interface. So this is a pop-up which, which is loaded at the same time as the HTML panel but is hidden until it is needed by clicking on one of these buttons. And this is a repeated um, uh, area of code so you only need to you to call the code and in brackets you put down the the actual um, bulb number on hue and it will open up the pop-up and show you the correct information about that particular bulb so again it's a really useful piece of code because it's re totally reusable and this whole page after um, getting the, the base programming sorted out only took a few minutes to to populate so hopefully you can benefit from that as you can see it still has the same real estate either side of it on the on the lighting uh, screen so again it's kind of the idea that having a similar interface on each screen enables your user to understand what's happening then we have the button for electricals control. So there are two macros here, one that resets to default, which is basically switching on devices that should be on during the day. And another one that says power down all devices, which switches all devices that should be switched off when you press that button off in order to save energy. For example, if you're just slipping out or if you want to ensure that you're not using um, energy when you're sitting and reading maybe for example and then we've got individual controls here so this one is a Philips air purifier which uses its own API which again is easy enough to bring into the HTML so that you can use it um, to control the the individual device we have a dehumidifier here which is a domotics device it's only connected to a dumb plug however when you have when you use these three buttons automatic constant on and constant off the idea of this is that when you click the automatic button a dummy switch in domotics called environment automation switches on and then the device is then controlled via domotics dependent on humidity levels however if you use constant off constant on and constant off that particular dummy switch which is called environment automation is switched off and then no further actions are taken automatically by Domotics regardless of what the humidity level is. So again that uses one dummy switch to determine how a rather dumb dehumidifier can be turned into a smart one. Then we have living room TV which is again another API system because it uses Harmony remote. So again there is a separate API for Harmony and as long as you understand and can use that API then you can link it directly into here to switch the TV on and off and to activate individual scenes within Harmony. Then we've got um, the dumb switches, the dumb smart switches here which are just ons and offs which are just directly linked to a demotic switch. Again within the HTML you'll notice that um, this is a repeated function so all you need to do on each of these ones is just add in a bit of HTML um, to call a JavaScript function called switch on and switch off and you just have to identify what the IDX of the individual device is in order to get it to switch on and off. And then we have some IKEA blinds here. I've done a completely separate piece of work and video on how to control IKEA blinds and this this exploits that use but here we can see that you can switch them 
you can have them all open all half closed or all closed but we can control individuals here as well by calling those switches in demotics which indeed which in turn call apis so moving on to climate this uses yet another area of code which you can you can use to your advantage hopefully which is calling several sensors into one area and again just like this area where you declare an array at the beginning of the html which you'll notice at the very, at the very beginning part of the html you also declare another array which shows the number of idx's up to you how many and you specify them one after the other and then um, in this particular area that you then set as a div within the main body of the HTML, these sensors will be brought through. And um, dependent on your preference, they can be updated as often as you like. But as far as I'm concerned, updating them once every, say, 30 seconds is, uh, is fine. Or even longer than that may be fine for your particular panel. But don't forget that we're always going back to the home screen on many occasions to leave the panel as it is and um, therefore the polling interval doesn't really take its toll on, the, on demotics when you're actually returning to home usually. So we, as usual, we've got a couple of in instant scenes going on up here, so they do a couple of things. So heating boost switches on a switch within Demotics, which calls an API to the um, British gas, gas Hive system. And the clothes drying mode does a couple of things. Not only does it do the same as heating boost, so it does actually switch on a heating boost, but it also switches off environmental automation so that humidity levels are ignored and then switches on dehumidifiers so that uh, the temperature is raised and dehumidifiers are switched on in clothes drying mode. So then, as I said, we've got the sensors here, which are brought up by several um, with, by an array of several um, sensors, which you can declare at the beginning. We also have something here, which again may not be useful for everybody, but I've set up four um, variables within Demotics: one for daytime high and, night and daytime low, and one for nighttime high and one for light nighttime low useful for um, myself to see um, what the temperature has been like in the past few hours and overnight just useful for, for that really then again um, I've copied the code from the um, from the from the power um, screen so it's just a pure co um, copy for these ones which again is something which is really useful you can just copy and paste the HTML and it will work on the other page which is great and then also we've got something here which directly links to Harmony, which sends an infrared blast for on off. There's no way of telling what state the air cooler is in. So there's just one button to switch it on or off because it's a toggle. If we then go on to the security screen, again, we've got a couple of um, scene buttons here. So we've got night and morning. So when the night switch is activated in Demotics, several things run at once. It's all in a Lua script. So things get switched off, things get uh, reduced, things get lowered, you know, etc. And that's just on one button. So everything goes off. Um, there's morning mode as well, which um, incidentally doesn't get pressed um, very often at all because morning mode is also linked to movement sensors within certain areas of the home and also on some doors so that as soon as um, a door is opened that is traditionally opened in the morning then morning mode switches on and therefore you don't necessarily need to come over to the panel and switch this on. There's also a leave and lock and return home button. They do the same sort of things as night mode, but are more profound because they also activate um, security alarms, which uh, make sound within the home and also um, email via the Demotics um, interface. They send out um, notifications to several people to say that, um, that, that something's happened without the security alarm being switched off. And then here again, we've got a slightly different type of sensor so it uses the same sort of array function as I've mentioned before however it does actually highlight particular um, sensors that are active at that moment so as as different sensors get activated then these would highlight in the highlight color and I think that's quite useful 
um, when you're looking at, at a security point of view to see whether or not your sensors are activating, etc. Very useful, I have to say, for when your panel is over at one end of the <laughs> one end of the room and your sensor is at the other end of the room and you're wanting to test it. Even if you can't physically see all of the in all of the text within the panel, you can actually see that things are changing because you can see the colour strip opening and closing when you open and close the door, for example, so very useful. Again, we've got some different switches down the right-hand side, but these are ones which you do need to know as a user if they're on or off, so all of these are off at the moment, so there's no flash of colour next to any of them. Incidentally, Cat Sitter is a dummy switch which behaves differently, which, which causes scripts to behave differently if we are expecting somebody to come and look after the cat because, of course, we wouldn't want a heightened level of, of security. We might want lights to come on when the door is opened. We might want an indication somehow via email that somebody's come in. And we, we may want the, um, the cameras to not come on to um, enable whoever's looking after the cat to have some privacy, but then we might want the cameras to then point towards food and towards litter, etc. So that's what happens with, with that particular dummy switch. I've also written a, a, a tiny script. Oh, you can actually just see that somebody's just come in, that my flatmate has just, just arrived. Um, that was um, very timely. We, we can also see here that there is a... Um, a dummy, sorry, not a dummy switch, it's actually a variable which shows what the external IP is. Now that is checked every few hours and if that changes then um, automatically it, the variable is changed here. Now that's very useful because our external IP does change quite, um, quite occasionally um, and therefore we do need that to be um, indicated to us. So this is the Sonos A. Uh, screen. This is the Sonos and audio control screen which shows the individual rooms that you can select at the top here and also what's playing in them. And then what we can do with those individual uh, Sonos areas is we can select from a pre-selected list of audio which you can choose from. There is also some other options so you can transfer audio from one room to a different room and you can also um, link up the Sonos speaker with additional rooms. This is all thanks to a separate GitHub repository which has been um, provided by Jishi and I will include a link to this in the description of this video. You need that running on whatever system you have where your demotics is stored um, but then you can gather things such as the album art, the current playback position and then you can use the transport controls to control each individual Sonos system which is really really useful. Um, so therefore that is how this works. There is also, if I go back to the home screen and show you finally the timer function, which again uses some information from Demotics. It uses a um, it uses a variable, and it uses some lower script which counts down the variable once every minute, and then when it reaches a certain period, in other words, when it reaches zero, then all the lights in the flat flash, which is really useful for us. So you can set a different timer depending on what's happening and also uh, there are several different timers here which are the usual timers that we use most often. I just thought I'd also show you the mobile version of the website which is exactly the same HTML it just uses a different CSS file which is automatically selected once um, the width of the HTML window um, changes to a certain point and it recognizes it as being a mobile phone. So this is again scalable on devices which are held in portrait mode. So again, um, it behaves in exactly the same way and no additional programming is required. So all screens scale automatically. The only um, downfall of this is that the time 
the temperatures and everything on um, either side of the real estate in the main screen. In other words, this part, the time, um, the temperature, etc., gets hidden in a hidden area. Even though it is still being updated, it's hidden within the mobile screen in order to make it easier for the user to understand. But all functions are still available to the individual to control, um, and it is very useful to call up on um, on a mobile in order to get those instant. Um, access to switches that you may need around the home. Here is the Git repository which shows all of the HTML which I've updated um, recently. So there are the two CSS's here which are the landscape and portrait CSS. In those individual ones um, at the top of the screen are some um, uh, variables which you can change the colors um, and they will permeate all the way through the HTML. So if you don't like the grey and pink which I've used, then you're more than welcome to change those, and they will permeate all the way through each individual, uh, each individual uh, file of HTML. And then you can see each individual part of, of um, each uh, HTML as shown here. So for example, if we take the um, home screen, which is index. And if I just show you which bits need to be changed for your individual um, for your individual setup, so you need to change your Demotics URL to the individual IP address of your Demotics and the Demotics port if you have changed it from the default of 8080. The user and password needs to be changed as well, so that um, you, the security protocols can be used to switch things on and off using Demotics. Now, Demotics, within the Demotics forum, there is a very good article on how you can recode your username and password from English or from your own language into this particular types of code. So have a look in the forum on how to change that. If you are struggling, let me know, let me know in the comments and I can point you in the right direction. This is if you are using Hue, so you need to put in your individual IP address of Hue and whoever you set yourself up as the API developer. Um, I followed the very, very first instructions from, from Hue when the API first came online and the, int the instructions actually told you to use your, the name new developer, but obviously you may have choos chosen a different one. Again, for the HTTP API for Sonos, which is by Jishi, you need to identify what the Sonos port is for that. So therefore I've added the Demotics URL, thinking that that's going to be the local host to the Sonos port. There's also a setup of what the initial room is when you when you open the, the, uh, the HTML as to which Sonos room you're controlling. And then down here we've got some onload information. So in other words, when the window has finished loading, when the DOM is finished, these are the things that need to be done. In immediately in order to update the interface and then we have some information down here which is the set interval which also shows the um, uh, what needs to be changed on a regular basis. I've put down here two intervals, one every 30 seconds which updates these particular things and one which updates every 10 seconds which updates these things. So it's up to you what interval you use um, you know, you just have to sort of balance how much information you want updated and what the overload potential is going to be. Not that I've ever experienced overload with Demotics anyway and HTML. So that gives you a very, very quick overview of what the HTML contains. But if you'd like to have a go yourself at fixing anything, at um, trying to implement it yourself, please feel free to do so. Please use this HTML however you see fit. Um, of course, any any HTML that I provide is as um, as is, and I don't um, accept any responsibility for any damage caused by the HTML. However, this has been tested very frequently, and it has been in use daily for months and months in our apartment, and um, has has behaved incredibly well. So, good luck with implementing it in your in your own way. If you want to make any comments, if you want to leave any links to how you've implemented it, then please feel free to do so. This has been by far one of the most requested items that I do a video on, and I do realise it's been quite informal and it's been quite lengthy, but hopefully it gives you an idea of or some inspiration on how to implement your own HTML interface on the front of Demotics. All that being said, thank you so much for watching. 
please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Quite a lot of my viewers aren't subscribers, so it'd be really, really helpful if you could. I'm nearing that 1,000 subscriber mark, which for some people doesn't sound particularly large, but for me it's a massive threshold, so I'd really appreciate it if you did. Thank you so much indeed for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.